The Tennessee Titans have released their final injury report of the week ahead of the Week 11 contest at M&T Bank Stadium on Sunday. The Titans have a grand total of six players ruled out, including outside linebacker Jadeveon Clowney, wide receiver Adam Humphreys, cornerback Adori, Jackson and left guard Roger Saffold. Two players also carry a questionable tag. On the bright side, rookie running back Darrington Evans continues to make progress towards his return, as he practiced once again on Friday and has practiced each day since he was designated to return from IR. He has not been activated from the list yet, though. Let's take a look at the players who have fully recovered and are able to play this Sunday. Through his first three games of 2020, Henry averaged a robust 27.3 carries per contest, which I think we can all agree is not sustainable when it comes to avoiding injury, no matter how big Henry is. In the last six games, Henry has seen a drop in action, as he's averaging 19.8 totes per game in that span, and he has totaled less than 20 carries in three of those six contests. The Titans are 3-3 in that span. In Tennessee's last four games, of which the team is 1-3, Henry is averaging 19.5 carries per game, including less than 20 in two contests. Instead of running Henry as much as they did early on in the season, the Titans have relied a bit more on backup running backs Jeremy McNichols and Deonta Foreman, both of whom have performed well in limited action. On Wednesday, Titans quarterback Ryan Tanhill revealed that Henry's drop in carries is, by design. While he's no doubt seeing less carries than he did during the Titans' first three games, Henry is actually averaging 22.3 carries per game overall, which is over two more than in 2019. Of course, that number is a bit skewed thanks to the heavy workload he saw early on. Are we going to sit here and say that Henry's drop in carries is the reason the Titans are struggling to win games of late? Absolutely not, the Titans have bigger fish to fry in the passing game and on defense and special teams. We will say that it's always better to get the ball into Henry's hands as much as possible, being that he's one of the team's best playmakers and can flip a game with just one run. On top of that, getting him going helps keep the defense off the field and sets up the passing attack via play action. It's up to the Titans to find that middle ground that has Henry getting more looks than he has lately, but less than what he had earlier in the season in order to keep him fresh for the long haul. At, the Titans star back should be seeing 20 totes per game. Tennessee Titans left tackle Taylor Lewin saw his season end early in week 6 after tearing his ACL against the Houston Texans, and since then he's been giving updates on how things are going early on in the process. Lewin had successful surgery on his injured knee recently, and the hope is that he'll be ready for training camp next year. In the meantime, the star left tackle obviously can't do much, and that hit him particularly hard on Halloween. Here's some posts from Lewin on social media detailing how he's feeling as he continues to be laid up, and it's clear this isn't easy for him. Despite not being able to take the field, Lewin has been live tweeting Titans games and cheering on his mates. The Titans will navigate life without Lewin for the second time in Week 11 against the Ravens. So far, Lewin's replacement, Ty Sombrilo, has performed admirably in his absence. Let's look forward to the best things will happen to him. Brown, who missed practice Thursday, continues to manage a knee issue, but we'd expect him to approach Sunday's game against the Ravens minus an injury designation. And it's confirmed today, the Titans' final Week 11 injury report was released. Sometimes great players have bad game, and A.J. Brown last Thursday night certainly had a bad game. There were several miscues by him, between him and Ryan Tanhill, A.J. Brown let a few footballs go through his hands. This is not a guy that drops the ball very often, so sometimes the answer in fantasy is like, look, things just happen, but let's look at A.J. Brown's resume coming into that Thursday night let down. He had a touchdown in five straight games, had two touchdowns against the Houston Texans. We know they can be beat up every single week on defense, but he's also succeeded in more difficult matchups like his 6 for 153 and a touchdown outing against the Pittsburgh Steelers, so I know he's going against a Baltimore Ravens team that is certainly one of, if not the very best defense in the entire NFL. You're not going to be dialing up those ceiling expectations for AJ Brown, but you're definitely expecting more than that Thursday night letdown that he gave you last week. He played with a heavy heart in week 10, as he'd lost his brother to cancer the day before the game. My condolences go out to the Davis family. 
He led the team with five catches for 67 yards, making it six of seven games where he's finished with at least 11.7 PPR points. The only game he didn't was against the Bears, who have been one of the best in the league at slowing down the position. Right behind them, though, are the Ravens. In fact, both the Bears and the Ravens have allowed just 1.52 PPR points per target to wide receivers, which is tied for the lowest mark in the league. They have allowed a respectable 64.6% catch rate to receivers, but they haven't gone very far, as the 11.39 yards per receptions indicates third lowest in NFL. Davis is going to see a lot of Marcus Peters in coverage, who is pretty consistent on the underneath routes that Davis typically runs. If there's an area of weakness to Peters' game, it's down the field, but Davis has been targeted deep, 20-plus yards, just four times all season. It's official list, waiting for the miracles from Corey together. The Tennessee Titans made a roster move on Wednesday with the activation of running back Sonaris Perry off injured reserve. Perry will now be available for the Week 11 game versus the Baltimore Ravens. Perry, who has played primarily on special teams this season, has appeared in two games for Tennessee, totaling two carries for nine yards. He will take the roster spot vacated by punter Ryan Allen, who was released on Tuesday. As it stands now, the Titans have five backs on their 53-man roster in Derrick Henry, Jeremy McNichols, Deonta Foreman, Kari Blazingame, and Perry. Another running back who could potentially be added soon is 2023rd round pick, Darrington Evans, who was designated to return from IR on Monday. It's safe to assume that there will be additional moves made at the running back position in the near future, with McNichols and or Foreman being in danger of losing their spot. Both have played well in limited action this season, though. The Ravens and Titans are both coming off a loss in Week 10, and Tennessee has lost three of its last four, while Baltimore has lost two of its last three. Both teams sit in second place in their respective divisions at the moment, but the Ravens are currently ahead of the Titans in the playoff hunt, with Baltimore occupying the seventh and final postseason spot, as compared to Tennessee being on the outside looking in at the number nine spot. Perhaps the biggest storyline coming into this game is the so-called revenge game, factor for the Ravens, who were unexpectedly appended by the Titans during the playoffs last season. The Titans entered the week as hefty 6.5-point underdogs to the Ravens, but that spread has since shrunk a bit, with Baltimore now being 5-point favorites over Tennessee.